Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today I'm going to be doing an Orcist deck profile. So this deck is a super fun deck that I've been playing around with. I had a deck profile of it a long time ago when it first came out, and it was a really fun deck when it first came out, but a lot of people made it meta, and so I kind of stepped away from the deck. But it's super fun now. I actually got a hold of a Dingritsu, and I was like, man, I should rebuild Orcus because I had it taken apart. And so I just kind of wanted to rebuild it. So quick shout out to one of my buddies, Sam. I just want to give him a quick shout out for trading me one of the Dingritsus. He actually traded me the first edition one. So I could actually build this deck. So I want to give him a quick shout out. So let's get straight on this, guys. But before we do, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell on there so you can become part of the notification squad. And let's get straight on this. And if you know who's on my playmat, which a lot of you will, definitely comment down below for the other folks who don't. I'm not going to say, because I want to see who catches who this actually is on the playmat, and I absolutely love this playmat that I got recently. So let's get straight on the deck profile. So first off, I mean playing three copies of Orcist Harp Horror. So Orcist Harp Horror is basically the effect is you can banish from the graveyard to target an Orcus monster in your deck, or to special summon an Orcus monster from your deck, but you cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck except dark for the rest of the turn, which is not that big of a deal because the majority of the time we're only going to be summoning dark monsters from the extra deck anyways. I don't even think we play anything but dark in the extra deck anyways. No, we play one monster that's not dark that's in the extra deck. Um, yeah. We only play one monster that's not, or three monsters that are not dark in the extra deck, and that's our Nightmare package. So that's not that big of a deal anyways. You just resolve the Nightmares first, and then use Harpoor afterwards. So then I play two copies of Orcist Symbol Skeleton. A lot of people just play one. I find that I want to extend a little bit more. So I play two copies of it. You can definitely play just one in the deck, but I wanted to play two. Um, you can get away with two. I never would play three, but you banish it from your graveyard to target another Orcus monster in your graveyard and then special summon another, or special summon a different Orcus monster in your graveyard, which is usually going to be Harp Horror, but you can only, you can't special summon monsters from the extra except for Dark for the rest of the turn. Then I play two copies of Orcus Nightmare. Orcus Nightmare is an interesting card. Um, I love the artwork of it and I love the lore behind it, but it cannot be destroyed by battle with a Link monster. And then this card, um, you can banish it from your graveyard, then target a face-up monster you control, and then you can you cannot special some monsters that are dark for the rest of, except for dark for the rest of the turn. Um, you get to send a dark machine type monster from your deck to the grave, and after you do, and if you do, the targeted monster gains attack equal to the sent monster's level times 100. So usually what I send off of out of my deck is one copy of World Wand. World Wand's a level 8, so it can make something go up by 800. The 800's pretty inevitable, or pretty irrelevant, but you're going to have a banished machine monster, and then you can use the effect of your Orcus Wonder, or not Orcus Wonder Wand, it should be an Orcus, but it's World Legacy World Wand, um, to banish it to special summon a, to target a banished machine Orcus monster and special summon it back to your side of the field, which is really beneficial to combo pieces. So that's it for the Orcus. For the other cards I'm playing, I'm playing three copies of Scrap Recycler because you want to normal summon this card to send a machine type monster from your deck to the graveyard. It's kind of the starter of the whole engine that you want to be able to normal summon this and then ban or send to the graveyard like Harpoor, then banish it, and then special summon something like Galatea. If you can't go for the Nightmare um, combo, you want to do something like this. I play one copy of Armageddon Knight just to send extra cards to the graveyard. It's kind of like a not quite as good Scrap Recycler, but it's here in case you need it. It's kind of like playing four Scrap Recyclers. And then I play one copy of Dark Arm Dragon because it is a dark deck. It's really easy because they banish all the time in this deck to just instantly special summon Dark Arm Dragon early on in your combo. And then after you do special summon the Dark Arm Dragon, you can end with like, I ended one time playing against somebody with eight dark monsters in the graveyard and all of which I did not mind banishing like shit alls and stuff that was in my extra deck that I had made. And I didn't care if I banished it, so I had the Dark Arm Dragon, and I popped their entire field. Like, I hit everything that they had and just OTK'd them with my one copy of Dark Arm Dragon. Plus, we're Dark Arm Duelists, so we have to play this one. I really see on the next October list this coming back to more than one, and I might even play this at, like, I might play uh, Dark Arm Dragon Orcist at some point if I can get more Dark Arm Dragons. Then we play two copies, or two Shadows in the deck, and that's one copy of Shadow Dragon and one copy of Shadow Beast, just so we can go second. This deck is more focused on going second than it is going first. So you use the Shadows to bait your to bait your opponent out with using something like Shadow Fusion to just kind of hinder your opponent's special summons and to use it as link material as well so you can add another Shadow Fusion. And it's another instant fusion target as well to special summon out your Shadow Winda 
because it's a level 5. So you can link it away and then add Shadow Fusion and then go into a Shadow Play later if you want to, which is another combo. But these are also really good because some of your Nightmare Monsters require you to discard stuff, and these trigger as well. So like you get to draw a card if you discard if it's sent to the graveyard, and you get to pop a Spell or Trap if it's sent to the graveyard. You usually don't use their flip effects very often at all. Then we play three copies of Ash Blossom because it's the best hand trap and two copies of Effect Veiler. If you wanted to, you could potentially, I don't recommend it, but I you could drop the Dark Arm Dragon and maybe one Ash Blossom and play two Ghost Ogres to make it a little bit more well-rounded on hand traps if you want to, but I think that this lineup is the best lineup. And I've carried the, I'm going to be carrying this into a tournament at some point. I don't know when, but this is going to be my deck unless it gets really, really neutered on the next list, which it could happen. Um, I haven't, it, this is before any announcements for the October ban list. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. So for the spells, we're going to be playing a single copy of Monster Reborn because it's still a one. One copy of Foolish Burial because it's a good starter card as well because we want to get our Orcus in the graveyard as quickly as possible. One copy of Orchestrated Return. This card is searchable, so it's just a good one of. I, only, I play this at one. A lot of decks don't play this, but... With my higher count of Orcist cards in my, like, two copies of Symbol Skeleton, three Harp Horror, and two Nightmare, it's a lot better to have it that you can search it off Galatea to, you know, if you have one or two extra Orcus in your hand, you play this and then discard them to the graveyard to set up for the next turn to be able to draw two cards to be able to get deeper into the deck. Then you play one copy of Orchestrated Babel. Um, Babel makes all of your Link Monsters basically quick effects that you can activate on your opponent's turn. And you can activate the um, effects. You can activate the effects of Orcist monsters in your graveyard or of Link monsters. Um, you control as quick effects, which is really really cool. And if this card's in your graveyard, you can send, if it's sent to the graveyard, except the turn it was sent to the graveyard, you can send a card from your hand or um, to the graveyard and add it back. So you only need one of it because it is searchable. So I just played it one. Uh, two copies of Twin Twister. Twin Twister is here because this is a going second deck, and you really need it as a going second deck. Three copies of um, Mind Control. It is good bait against your opponent to play Mind Control because this card is basically activated. Either they're going to give up their monster to you and you're going to use it as link material for a nightmare, or you're going to they're not going to bait it. You're not going to you know do anything about it and you're just going to get their monster and then go into a nightmare monster. So it just depends on what you're playing against. Depends on what they're going for. And if they establish a board, you can activate this and just go straight for them. Also what I meant to say earlier was is you can drop an Ash Blossom if you want to and the Dark Arm and play two copies in the Biru if you want to to make it more control based. Because this deck is a super control based deck. Uh, three copies of Instant Fusion. This is another one of the kind of bait cards that I play. You play this to summon out your copies of Winda, um, Millennium Eyes Restrict, and Thousand Eyes Restrict, just to kind of bait your opponent out. If they don't, you know, hit this, I'm going to summon out the Millennium Eyes. If they just say, okay, that's fine, I'm not going to summon Millennium Eyes, but I will summon something like Winda so I can search my Shadow Fusion if I know they don't have anything, which sometimes you just automatically know because of their body language and stuff like that. You can read somebody to see if they have a hand trap a lot of times. Um, three copies of Call by the Grave because I hate hand traps in this deck. Like, I really want my combo to go through, as you can probably tell. And then three copies of Shadow Fusion. That's another reason why I came back to this deck was because I saw people playing Shadow Fusion, and I was like, wow... That actually really works in this deck because you can send something like Harp Horror or something like that to the graveyard to be able to go into your Shed All plays, which really is awesome that you can go into Winda. And I really wanted to play Construct, but I haven't really found the room in the extra deck to play Construct yet. But Construct is another option because you play light hand traps if you want to play Construct. But I just didn't find the room for it, so I kind of cite it just in case I have room for it at some point. So that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get into the traps. So for the traps, I am doing something that I don't see a lot of people do, and that's playing two copies of Crescendo. Um, Crescendo, it, to me, is better as a two of because it has so much utility. It is searchable, but I like hard drawing it, to be honest with you. I do like hard drawing it because if I hard draw it, then my opponent doesn't think I have it. But if I search it, they know that I have it. Um, and I do play a lot of cards that you can set, like Call by the Grave, Twin Twisters, and stuff like that. And so I'll set two or three cards, and they try and Twin Twister me. I have the Crescendo to block it. And so Crescendo is just such a good card. And if you have two of them in your hand, you just set one, and then leave one in your hand, because it's hard once per turn. And then you bait them out 
you use the first one and they're like, oh, well, he just uses one crescendo. And then I've got a second one lying in wait for the next turn. And people don't expect it. So that's why I like the two crescendo. Now, it's also really good to be able to just negate spell, trap, or monster effects. It's like a big infernity barrier that you can banish to um, add one of your dark machine monsters as banished or in your deck. Uh, to your hand, which is just super good to be able to get that searchability. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, you're going to be playing two copies of Dingrisu. Uh, Dingrisu is a really good card to be able to XYZ summon on top of a uh, Orcus to Link monster, so it's really easy to bring it out. Um, as soon as it's Link summoned, you get to send a... or lose as soon as it's uh, XYZ summoned, you get to send a card from your opponent's... Uh, that they control to the graveyard or attach a banished machine type monster to this card. So it's just instant spot removal is why it's so good. Um, and this, this card is really, really good, but you can just overlay it on top of any Orcus monster. I only play double Galatea. I only find that I go into double Galatea in my build. So I just play it at two. You definitely could drop something in the extra deck if you want to play the third copy of it. I just decided to drop it down to two and I see people playing it at three. And I see people playing it too, but you always want at least two Galatea. One copy of Longritsu, the Orcus Orchestrator. Um, basically, oh, by the way, she just searches um, Orcus spells or traps. Like, that's basically what she does by shuffling a uh, banished machine monster back into the deck. Two, one copy of Longritsu, you get to target at any point while he's on the field. You get to target two of your banishment machine type monsters and then shuffle them into the deck. And if you do, you get to send one linked monster. So you can summon them in either one of your link zones and then technically that monster is linked. So then you shuffle it back into the deck, which is pretty good. One copy of Brawl Sword because you can OTK your opponent like crazy. Uh, Topologic. Topologic is really good in this deck because you can special summon. If you have Babel on the field and you put um, an Orcus in the graveyard, you can use them as quick effects and then special summon to zones that Topologic is pointing to and then just destroy everything on the board, which is really good. And then for my Nightmare Package, I'm playing one Phoenix, one Cerberus, and a Mermaid. Mermaid is the MVP. I think that this card is going to get banned on the next list. I, I just feel like it is, which is just going to push us to play more Orcus cards in the main deck and play less Nightmares, which is going to be fine. And the deck would be okay if they did hit Nightmare, in my opinion. Um, or Mermaid, I, I think it would be okay, and it would free up, it, you just have to play more Orcus, you'd have to focus more on the Orcus engine, to go into some more Galateas, more Longritsus, and more Dingritsus, and less of the Mermaid, um, and Nightmares, you know, and I mean, that'd be fine, and I think that's what they're gonna do to make the deck a little bit less consistent. Um, one copy of Link Rebo, because you can use this to go into, um, off of your Millenniumizer Strix and your Thousandizer Strix, because they're gonna destroy themselves anyways, and then two copies of Winda, um, I really thought about dropping a Winda for a Construct and playing one and one, um, and I might do that, and that's entirely up to you guys. If you have the Construct, you can do either or. You can play one and one or one and two. Um, just depends on what you want to drop in the extra deck. And then I play a Thousandize Restrict and Millenniumize Restrict. These are just my instant fusion targets along with the Windas, because the Windas, I usually summon like one Winda and then search a Shadow Fusion. And then I'll use the Winda at the end of my combo. If my opponent has a monster, a special summon from the extra monster down, I use that Winda, or I'll use the Shadow Fusion to go into my second Winda, so on the next turn they can't special summon but once. So that's it for the deck, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this one. This is like one of the first times I do like really, really meta decks. And I'm going to be doing Sky Striker as well. If I haven't already uploaded that one, I'm going to be doing Sky Striker and Thunder Dragon because you guys have been really requesting me to do Thunder Dragon. There's this one guy that comments on like every one of my videos and it's like, hey, can you do Thunder Dragons? And I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm actually going to do it. I do pay attention to the comments and I'm really excited to show you guys that one. So anyways, guys, this is Dark Arm Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell and there's soon come part of the notification squad and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you around, guys.